this Travis Scott album is fire. At first I was skeptical, but then I was like, you can't possibly review an album in 24 hours. Don't you know? have been asking what laptop do I use right now I use the MacBook Air but I've only had this laptop for a little over a year my primary workhorse used to be the MacBook Pro this gets the job done until I upgrade what is going on everyone I hope you all had a wonderful productive day those of you all who don't get your questions answered in this video or you want a more in-depth answer feel free to reach out to me on Twitter and Instagram you can just slide in those DMS and shout out to everyone who has already done that don't hesitate to reach out even if it's a long question I promise I'll get to you if you're watching this video I assume that this is your first semester majoring in computer science or you're thinking about majoring in computer science some of you all are excited and you're ready to start programming some of you all might feel a little bit nervous or unsure because you've never programmed before but that is okay I've been in your shoes before I've got this really cool app called Plant Nanny, cute, but I don't drink enough water consistently. Like I'll drink eight bottles one day and then the next day I'll drink like three or four and then I don't even consistently use that app for some odd reason so my plant keeps dying and it's like stressing me out. What can you expect when pursuing a degree in computer science? There's a lot of theory and algorithms, computability, Ah, I can't say that. Computability. Computability, mathematics, maybe even some physics and chemistry because you got to do those prerequisites. Instead of just boring you all with all this information, go back to when I was a freshman and I'm going to look at my first year curriculum if I can open up this laptop so you all can get an idea of what I did my first year as a computer science major. Disclaimer, not every curriculum is the same. You may start out at a different level depending on how well you did on your AP computer science exam or placement exam. Isn't my sticker game fire? It's crazy. It took me a while to get a case because I love putting stickers on my laptop and I didn't really see people put stickers on their case. Then I was like, I don't want to break my laptop. So just throw the stickers on a case. All right, fall semester 2014, 2015. That seems like forever ago. I took a total of seven, 10, okay. I took 16 credit hours and I took public speaking, which is comms 1030, that's the class name, computer programming in Java, CS 2300, English 1510, writing and rhetoric one, AKA freshman comp, math 1200, college algebra, PED 1004, which was jogging, that's laughable. You see 1900? learning community seminar. Wondering why I didn't have many programming courses my first semester, it's because I really wanted to ease in to my curriculum because I felt like a novice. I didn't have much programming experience. And to be honest, that worked to my benefit because I had time for extracurriculars, I had time to do some side projects, and I had a high GPA which showed employers that I'm a solid student and I showed employers that I have some programming experience. For those of you all who do not know, I did get a software development slash engineering internship my freshman year. So you don't have to have a huge amount of programming experience. You just have to show that you have some experience and that you're a solid student. And to separate yourself, work on some side projects. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about every course. Obviously, public speaking was something my university made me do because I went to a liberal arts campus and they wanted us to have a diverse curriculum and I respect that it made me a more well-rounded student. So let's talk about computer programming in Java, CS 2300. I gotta be in that class. It was four credit hours, three credit hours for lecture, one credit hour for lab. We met three times a day and had one lab. Programming in Java was a pretty easy course. Learned basic syntax, typing like strings, booleans, ints, floats. We learned about typing because Java is a statically typed programming language. Yeah, I can't even say program. Programming language static type languages are those in which types are checked during compile time. Whereas dynamic type language, the type is checked during runtime. Just to give you a rundown between statically typed and
and dynamically typed languages. A type system within a program language that assigns a property called type to various constructs of a computer program, such as variables, expressions, functions, modules. I vividly remember making a graphical user interface. Interface? What am I? New York graphical user interface. Graphical user interface in my Cleveland accent, which is like country, I guess. At least that's what they told me in New York City. I vividly remember that because that was kind of fun. We did it in lab. That was my first time ever programming a front end. All right, it is time to move on to spring semester 2014, 2015. Let's see what I took. Okay, I took Kim. 1151, which is a PLTL for Chem 1510. I took Chem 1510, Fundamentals of Chemistry 1. I took CS 2400, Intro to Computer Science 1. Probably the hardest class I had ever taken in my life at that time. EDEC 1600, Intro to Child Development. What an amazing course. I'm gonna be such a better dad because I took that course. Math 1300, Precalculus. Rec 1142, I was still kayaking. And this is a speaker I bought for my freshman dorm. As you can tell, this course load was a lot more difficult besides coastal kayaking and intro to childhood development. And I took one, four, five, nine, twelve, 17 total credit hours. Chem 1151 was basically extra practice for chemistry. I took that course because I think Chem 1510 has like a 50% failure rate. And I remember the professor was like, if you fail the first exam, there is a 7% chance that you'll pass a class. Cool on that, yo. Sign me up for PLTL. Of course, I had to take a chemistry placement exam that would tell me whether or not I can take Chem 1500 or Chem 1510. Chem 1500 would not count towards my academic curriculum, but Chem 1510 would. So I was like, yo, I gotta pass this exam. And I didn't even know that I had to take an exam. And I took it first semester and I actually placed into Chem 1510, which was really dope. But it was weird because I'm much better in math than chemistry but I passed the exam to take Chem 1510, which was a higher level than like my Math 1200. I thought that was a little weird, but it was cool. We did stoichiometry, we did some cool experiments. Class cost a lot of money because I had to buy a lab coat, a notebook, goggles, and I had to buy the software. I got C in that class. Intro to Computer Science, CS2400, the class you all care about. Well, that was an accelerated version of Java. I think I learned everything that I learned in Java in like one week. In this class, we focused on the fundamentals of programming. Let me just read you the description. Introduction to computer science, the discipline of computing, and the programming language C++. Topics include elementary C++, computer algorithms, loops and flow of control, procedural abstraction, functions, streams, arrays, strings, objects, and classes, polymorphism, and operator overloading, professional society, professionalism and ethics, pointers, dynamic memory, and dynamic arrays. And when you graduate, basically you become a wizard. I think the first project was to write down an algorithm. We didn't code it, but it was like a PB&J algorithm. Like, write an algorithm to create a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I took that real serious. It was like a whole page. We also talked about loops for sure. Because if you can't differentiate when you need to use a for loop, a while loop, or a do while loop, you will struggle. really struggled in that class because I didn't get the fundamentals. I'm pretty sure I've talked to you all about this before and how I had to withdraw from this course, but it ended up working out well. I took my time. As I said before, I graduated on time, even though I didn't even pass this class until first semester of sophomore year because I withdrew from it second semester of freshman year. Believe it or not, I ended up becoming a tutor for this course. So slow and steady wins a race. This is also a four credit hour class, three for lecture, one for the lab. And I got some really cool music you should listen to while you're coding and hopefully you have voice canceling headphones, all that good stuff. Check this out. This is what I listen to when I code.
university, they actually advise that you take some sort of intro to programming course before you take the actual core intro to programming course unless you test really well or have had some sort of programming experience. You don't have to take the placement exam or at least I didn't to take CS2400 but I think now they do make you do that because it is a very challenging course. But for those of you all who are accelerated, expect to dive into functions, files, manipulating files, some intro to classes, maybe your last couple projects you're gonna be doing, some big class project. I have noticed that some schools only have one intro to computer science course and then they jump right into data structures. However, I think I noticed that those schools that do that don't really go over time complexity. So at my school, you have to take Intro to Programming 1 and Intro to Programming 2. And in Intro to Programming 2, we jump into algorithms, some data structures like linked lists, doubly linked lists. We go over some polymorphism, inheritance, and then they expect us to take data structures at the end or at the end of sophomore year, no later than the beginning of junior year. I took it at the beginning of junior year and it worked out fine, but we went over time complexity. We got deeper into actual data structures like binary trees, AVL trees. We went over vectors as well, we went over encapsulation. So you might see that freshman year, but I doubt you'll see much of it. it seems like most schools focus on functions, types, loops, classes, maybe some overloaded operators when it comes to your first year because your first year is vital. That's where you learn about the fundamentals of programming. So don't stress yourself out. There are going to be times where it's going to be really hard and you may feel like giving up. There are going to be times where you may be failing and you really have to persevere. This major is very challenging, but it is also very rewarding. So do not give up. Even if it takes you five or six years, that's such a small time frame when you look at your whole life and you look at your whole career. This major is demanding, but it is also very rewarding. There is so many internship opportunities. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna get a big breath of everything, but just take your time. Say a little prayer, take a deep breath, do whatever you need to do to be successful. If you always want to keep my videos in your back pocket for whenever you need some advice or you need some questions answered, smash that subscribe button. Shout out to Pinterest for this mason jar. I don't drink out of it. I just use it to store my candy. I eat candy whenever I want because I'm an adult. <laughs>